So this video is part three of the genetics basics talk, and this has to do with uh, splicing of DNA and splice mutations. Okay, so to explain, uh, to go back uh, what was uh, covered in the last videos, uh, we're uh, illustrating what happens with DNA with uh, the following sentence uh, made up of three letter words because every three bases of DNA specifies a particular amino acid to be produced in the protein. So our sentence is the cat saw the rat but not the bat. And then the word out at the end is a code word for uh, the end of the sentence. Okay, so uh, splice sites. Now, the DNA for a gene in a person's genome um, isn't just the regions which code for the protein sequence. Uh, only a small part of each gene is actually the coding regions, which are called exons. And most of the gene is actually composed of regions between the exons, which are called introns, uh, which have other functions, but when the protein is actually made, uh, the DNA is copied to RNA, and then the introns are spliced out. So you splice uh, all of the exons together to make the final sequence, which then gets turned into a protein. And you can kind of think about it as the way that a movie is produced. Uh, each scene from a movie is uh, filmed separately, and then uh, at the end, after the entire movie has been filmed, then it's edited and spliced together. Sometimes for a given movie, you can have different versions. Uh, you know, you can have a um, uh, version on video with many extra scenes which weren't actually shown in the theaters. Uh, and so proteins are, are actually like that. Different versions of a protein from the same gene are called uh, isoforms. Okay, so in the sentence analogy, um, we're going to take our, um, you know, sentence, the first part of our sentence and say that uh, the cat, uh, the first two words of the sentence is, uh, is the first exon, and then, you know, saw the rat, etc., is the second exon. And then in between is uh, an intron, and it has some sort of special sequences of DNA at the beginning and the end of the of the intron, we'll illustrate it in the sentence example by, you know, splice begin and splice end. And that tells the, see, the cell when it's making the protein that, okay, this is the beginning and the end of the part that you're supposed to take out to assemble the final version of uh, the RNA before you make the protein. Okay, so then after splicing, it removes all the part in yellow and blue, and then it uh, produces the, the final sentence, the cat saw the et cetera. Okay, but what happens if uh, we change one of these letters which marks the beginning and the end of the splicing? We'll, we'll change an L to a V. Now it doesn't say splice begin, so the cell doesn't realize that that's something it's supposed to take out, and then just d thinks that all of that sequence of letters is a coding sequence, um, you get a bunch of nonsense. And so, you know, that's basically what happens uh, in a gene if you have what's called a splicing mutation. Now, most splicing mutations are kind of, as illustrated in this example, either at the very beginning or the very end of an intron. And uh, so this is an example of a splice site mutation at the beginning of an intron. And the numbering is 855 plus 1. Okay, what does that mean? Well, the 
DNA numbering is for the final version of the DNA um, after all of the introns have been taken out. Okay, but this mutation is actually in an intron, so what you do is you take the closest DNA base that's not in an intron and then count into the intron. So this is 855, which is the end of an exon, and then count one base into the intron. Uh, it's missing a G, so it doesn't splice correctly. Um, and this is an example at the end of an intron. You know, here, um, basically, you count backwards in the intron because the the nearest um, coding DNA base is uh, two bases ahead of you. So an easy way to look, find most, recognize most splice site mutations in a genetic report is if it has a plus or a minus sign in the numbering, that means that it's actually, the mutation is in an intron which almost always means that it of uh, its uh, causes a mutation by affecting splicing. Okay, so to review um, some of the some of the vocabulary that we've um, gone over in the past three three lectures. Okay, so for most genes uh, that aren't on the X chromosome, uh, everybody has two copies of the gene, one from each parent. And a disease has what's a recessive inheritance if you only get the disease if you inherit a mutation from both copies of your gene, meaning both of your parents uh, had a, were carriers of the of the mute of the disease, but usually that means that they didn't have any any symptoms of the disease themselves. Now, the mutations can also be categorized as homozygous, meaning that both mutations um, from each parent uh, are the same. Um, that can happen, but what uh, tends to be more common is heterozygous, that means that you inherited a mutation in each, uh, in the gene from each parent, but the two mutations are different. Okay, and then uh, some, some vocabulary used to refer to changes in, in DNA. Uh, a variant just means any change in DNA compared to a standard sequence. It turns out none of us really have a standard sequence. We all have variants. Uh, most of the time they're harmless, in which case they're called polymorphisms. That just means it doesn't cause disease, it just makes us all different from one another. Now a mutation that does cause a disease is called a or a, a variant that does call it a disease is called a mutation. Um, sometimes in a genetic report, we don't actually, we know that there's a variant, but we don't know whether it causes a disease. So it is either called VOUS, variant of unknown significance, or sometimes that's just abbreviated VUS. And that's a, um, a maybe it's a mutation, but we're not sure. And if someone finds that is, that's found in somebody's uh, genetic report, uh, it generally requires some more detective work. And uh, some, uh, some more vocabulary describing mutations. And uh, remember the, the genetic terminology uh, has, you know, describes both what happens at the DNA level and at the protein level. So in DNA, um, you can have a substitution that just means you change one base, A, C, G, or T, to a different one. Uh, you can have a deletion, so you delete one or more DNA bases. Um, you can uh, 
stick one or more extra DNA bases in. It's an insertion, or you can, you know, duplicate one or more bases, so that's a duplication. Now, depending on on what it actually happens and the, the details of the different things can happen in the protein. Uh, if it's in um, a region near a splice site, then the protein, the, the final sequence of the DNA can not be spliced together, which usually means you can't make any protein at all. Uh, you can have a missense, which means that you put a different amino acid than is supposed to be there at some place in the protein. Uh, you can have a nonsense, which uh, remember this doesn't mean what you might think it does. That just means that you stop making the protein before it's really supposed to be done. Or you can mess up the grouping of three uh, DNA bases for each amino acid, which means that the amino acids, the, the bases will be grouped wrong and the amino acids will be uh, totally wrong. So this is the, the end of um, this lecture and um, hopefully you're a little more familiar with um, DNA and uh, genetic reports. So thank you for listening.